and welcome to the farm everybody thanks for tuning in um, in this video I'm just gonna give a tour around and kind of showcase what uh, sustainable farming practices are in place and um, how things are working so far and what the future plans are and uh, Trying to be as realistic as possible, but of course, uh, this is a farm with a <laughs> fairly large budget or uh, uh, lots of grants uh, for funding, however you want to see it. Uh, but yeah, basically, I just want to take you around and show you the, the basics uh, and uh, so you have an idea of what makes this farm a sustainable farm and also uh, what constitutes as carbon farming here and uh, of course real life practices from actual uh, carbon farming uh, modeled here and also uh, some uh, uh, nice to imagine uh, carbon farming techniques uh, if money was no object <laughs> so basically um, just want to start here uh, here we have our manure pile um, brought in by local dairy farms and uh, things like that so uh, manure pile here and uh, what we do is uh, use this loader and load it up in one of the two um, end dumps here large uh, large haulers and we take it down over you see that red building down there that is uh, in the same area as uh, the processing plant uh, which turns the manure into the uh, fertilizer uh, which we apply to the fields. It comes out as a um, solid refined fertilizer um, which we can uh, see later on. Well, while we're here at the main uh, main garage um, just want to walk up here. As you can see there's plenty of trees around. Um, we've got trees planted. Uh, a couple of these little wind, wind stations here which uh, power like small things like they they add into the lights and things. Uh, of course, we've got the giant wind turbine there, um, which of course powers uh, the majority of things. And these kind of add uh, supplemental electricity, uh, you know, just a little extra uh, additional energy. And while we're walking that direction towards the uh, 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 wind, wind turbine here, uh, we've also got a small solar station here, solar farm. Um, to also, uh, in addition to the wind power, you know, we collect solar electricity. We've got the solar farm and, um, you know, try to just diversify and have, uh, you know, big wind, little wind, and some solar is scattered around the farm in various places, not just here. Uh, but this, obviously, uh, close to the shop, it does help power the shop. And in addition, uh, the fuel pumps and everything, uh, some equipment does use uh, DEF, diesel exhaust fluid, um, but we do try to minimize that, um, the use of that. Uh, usually we just have, uh, we do have low emissions equipment here uh, that doesn't always require it. So, yeah, so that's the manure. Uh, in addition um, to the, uh, the animal manure, um, we also use um, uh, mowing residue. Uh, there's a field that we cut. Um, some of it is used for hay, uh, but the majority does go to the composting facility as well. And all of the equipment for that operation, I think, is down there at the field, actually. I'm just looking around now. Uh, here we have a used... <laughs> used planter here um, not the one that we use right now but this is kind of a project and uh, the main planter that we use uh, is down here and it is a mod that we use maybe I'll maybe we'll get the scooter get our electric scooter going here Nope. I don't see it. <laughs> Alrighty. I guess we'll take the truck. Psst, psst, psst. Come here. No way he's running. 
You want a pet? Yeah, you want some pets. You want some pets? Okay. So while we're driving around, I uh, just want to point it out real quick. Uh, these are just some uh, basic sensors that we have placed around. Um, little solar powered sensors basically monitor rainfall and um, soil, uh, soil moisture, things like that. Just a simple probe. Um, speaking of soil, uh, soil uh, or an uh, analysis, soil sampling and all that, uh, I can take you up while we're at this end show you the equipment we use to sample the soil back of our new Holland tractor so this is a soil, soil sampling uh, unit and it uh, yep we just take it out through the field and basically we use this version of the map as you can see, each of these uh, almost like stop sign shaped uh, hex is that a hexagon, octagon, <laughs> octagon shapes. Each of these octagon shapes is roughly uh, the patch of soil that the unit samples and is an estimation of the uh, soil around uh, the center of where this sample was actually taken. And uh, as you can see, we've kind of created a uh, profile here of the different soil types um, just within the fields as you can see this is this larger field this is not in crop production um, so this is just a small part that has been sampled that is in crop production and uh, as you can see so yep, we can get the pH values we can get the nitrogen values and that's that shows a lot of difference um, we were testing application rates, customized application rates to see. Um, so we, you know, we made an outer outer band with the fertilizer spreader here, and chose to apply no fertilizer in some sections to kind of compare. You know, what the, what is the yield like in the game? Does it differ? And uh, is it really necessary to apply this much? Um, so I don't have I don't have a real world idea um, when it comes to nitrogen kilograms per hectare. I don't know uh, what is actually I haven't done the research to figure out if the game is being accurate there, but basically that's what our map looks like right now as of uh, as of this time in the season. It's still early spring, so we haven't uh, haven't fertilized yet anything else. Uh, number nine field is where the uh, grass harvesting takes place. Um, so that one will need, uh, we'll need some fertilizer, uh, based on how much we pull from it. Uh, but yeah, so here, and you even, you know, break down to the yield, you know, why some, some areas are different than others, but overall that field does seem to be lacking in nitrogen according to this. So, uh, but yeah, really nice to know the soil types and, um, also some fields are on slopes and things and are near, um, uh, sensitive areas like streams and um, so as we go around I'll show you what we've done to try and minimize minimize um, fertilizer runoff even though it is um, basically a, a more natural fertilizer that we you know make from compost and manure and things it is a processed fertilizer and um, any you know any excess nutrients um, is is the problem not just uh, how it's made so what's exactly in it but the excess nutrients is is the problem with this pollution and runoff so we have tried to do a couple things um well as you can see right now um since we're driving by the closest field uh this is our cover crop we choose to plant oilseed radish as a cover crop it's easy it's simple in the in the game and um yeah it just looks looks so much better than a bare and empty field uh, we do have data in the bottom right hand there. Um, it kind of just shows again, you know, what's what is the soil type and all that pH value. And we can also get our sensor going. And this just takes a reading. It shows, you know, crop growth, which this is at 100%. The, the crop is matured. 
um, but also what is the, uh, I believe, uh, yep, crop moisture. So we can analyze that and we can also get the fertilization level and also um, wetness of the ground, um, which affects soil compaction. So one of the reasons we choose radish again is um, they are good at keeping the soil loose. You know, they grow deep and wide. Um, so the radish is um, a pretty ideal candidate um, for not only returning nutrients back to the soil because of the size of the, how big they can get, um, but they also help break up the soil, reduce compaction. Um, just a great choice. Pretty winter hardy, cold temperature hardy. Um, so yeah, that's the main one we go, th go with. And uh, when we actually start planting, one of the earliest crops that we do plant that can also act as a cover crop is canola. As you can see, that has a strip going up here. Uh, so yep, you look at the text screen. This is that you can tell the difference too. It's not a different stage of growth. This is an entirely different crop. So oil seed radish is on the left, and now we've got a strip of um, canola growing here, and it is at 33% growth. <laughs> so that's you know just what the game gives us. Um, yeah, that's uh, so yeah. We use the canola kind of as a cover crop too. This is kind of just like end of year. Um, just empty the seed out of the planter, so that's why it looks kind of odd that there's a strip going up and down through this otherwise um, relatively perfectly square <laughs> field of oilseed radish. So uh, that was to get the rest of the canola seed out, and it has been growing. Uh, I don't believe we fertilized this part. It is growing. I think some fields we choose not to fertilize, and uh, this is just going to grow on its own. But um, in addition to acting as a cover crop, what we do with the canola is we use it uh, to make biofuel. And I will, that is all down, all the, all the processing facilities are down around the other, uh, other mechanic shop. Um, as I was, back to what I was saying earlier about fertilizer runoff, um, what we have done, this was all flat. We've um, kind of dug trenches around the fields, um, which kind of turns them into waterways too in the wet, wet part of the year. Um, but also uh, to um, minimize, you know, kind of control where any runoff does go instead of it just, you know, washing, washing away to who knows where. Um, these trenches have been dug to kind of control where it does go and uh, if, if we are applying too much or what have you. So, And also, in addition to the trenches, we've got um, kind of leave a, a uh, kind of a barrier. Uh, this is kind of where, you know, um, so we have poplars and uh, we've just kind of left this middle section to kind of um, just do whatever it wants to do, you know, it's kind of like a mini, mini habitat area. So um, we leave a, we leave kind of an edge, kind of a boundary around some of the fields um, to give, you know, wildlife some kind of uh, channel, I guess. This is an un uninterrupted uh, uh, channel from one end of the field to the other. And uh, so instead of just having one huge field, we would kind of divide this one up, give them, give birds and things some habitat and also, um, yeah, another drainage drainage slash, you know, kind of holding, uh, holding ditch area through here, um, which also, this is also on a slope, so um, we, we let those areas grow wild, so um, there's more water resistance, so things, you know, it's not just runoff, it's controlled, it's slowed down, and um, yeah, try to address any kind of, any areas where there are big slopes where water could be running off. A um, little bit of erosion here. Planted some, planted some uh, evergreens uh, to stop any erosion and uh, can, uh, stop it from spreading. Yeah, try to max. We try to maximize trees around fields. Um, not that we leave fields bare, but uh, an empty, a bare field is, um, you know, exposed to the elements, exposed to wind, especially, and. Um, you know, wind, wind can definitely take away soil. You know, it may not seem like much, but when you add it up year over year, it definitely can. So we've 
kind of tried to mock that up. Plant plenty of trees, slow down wind, um, especially we don't want it whipping across the fields. Um, you know, obviously there is still plenty of uh, still plenty of open space, so we could we could uh, definitely improve there. Um, but like I said, we, you know the fields are never bare, so. But yeah, not only um, yeah, not only for leaving the fields bare. For, I mean, but um, you know, also when it's the ground has just been worked up, you know, the wind can steal seeds and stuff. So try to plant, try to have some kind of barrier around the fields, um, keep them protected. So um, be real quick up here. Some of the grass harvesting equipment, uh, disc buying equipment over there. And um, yep, and we do we do a little bit of hay, but the majority of the uh, grass field is used for composting, which we use as fertilizer in fertilizer production. And I believe the rest of the equipment is out there, including the uh, grass harvesting wagon. So we can go out that way, um, but we'll be passing by all of the processing plants where we make the biofuel and um, and the train of thought biofuel and fertilizer so yeah, as you can see um, try to reduce we try to minimize you know any kind of mono monoculture um, since we basically only use one cover crop uh, that is canola over there though it's not all oil seed at radish um, but yeah just try to leave these berms little habitat areas just give give local wildlife something to go off of. And there's, uh, I don't know if you can see that. Um, again, we do have these little solar, solar powered um, uh, crop sensors, I guess you could call it, field sensors, uh, basic weather, uh, because local, you know, extremely local data is useful. Um, you know, a station per field is ideal, just to, you know, get an idea of exactly, you know, what precipitation is falling where you know, back to uh, the idea of precision ag, you know, using that data, collecting that data. And there's another station there. Um, try to keep them out of the way too, but <laughs> don't want them in the way uh, when it comes time to work the field. So try to try to place them in uh, areas that they will not be in the way. Uh, got a couple more little wind turbines up here. Um, basically just, you know, supplemental electricity, you know, work the lights and stuff. There's a, too much uh, equipment electrical equipment in this shed up here. Um, yeah, just more equipment. That is our liquid sprayer uh, attachment. The uh, for the uh, the machine is set up for um, solid fertilizer, for uh, granular granulated fertilizer. This is one of our, um, this is what we, we use, one of the planters we use for cover cropping um, just basic seed drill, um, kind of keep that on the on uh, on backup. And uh, yep, another uh, another fertilizer spreader set up for solid spreading uh, sp spreading solid fertilizer. Um, yep. Really. And yeah, I should mention too, this was the, before we bought the um, John Deere uh, fertilizer spreader, this is what we, you know, we used a tow behind um, for application. And I'm not sure, where is that? <laughs> where is that spreader at? It's parked in one of the fields. Early spring, it should be out there getting ready. So here we are entering the uh, collection of processing plants. This is the uh, composting facility. Um, you see, we've got a we got a pile there to clean up. We're at capacity now, um, so that facility is just churning up the churning up the manure, all the ingredients, make it into nice um, 
nice compost that is ready to be um, that will be ready to be processed into fertilizer which is what this facility is um, so it can do I believe it can do liquid as well but we only use it for solid um, so there's a spout for solid fertilizer comes out as a white white looking powder um, from the manure and other other ingredients that we add to the compost and uh, so yeah that's that is the uh, that's the facility there Two, basically two facilities together. Um, in the background is the biogas facility, um, which is sometimes where we take our green, the green, uh, the grass that's been cut in the wagon, but we don't own that facility. And see, we've got a solar farm here as well. Not necessarily that powers all of this, but it is a nice, uh, nice supplemental electricity. While I'm over here, this is our biodiesel station. Uh, drop off the canola, it gets processed, and we fill up all of our equipment here that uh, can run uh, the biofuel, including this pickup truck. Though so most of the di all of the diesel vehicles uh, run the biofuel made from canola, which re you know reduces the cost of operating these equipment because we don't need to buy petroleum diesel fuel. And like I was saying, you know, habitat areas, so we have a couple beehives up here, just any space that can be utilized and um, kind of given back or, uh, you know, that isn't really farmable. You know, we try to set, it, set aside uh, some land, set aside land for habitat. This is all, uh, as you can see, it's all uh, pretty much withered dead. Um, this is this whole field actually um, except for the small part up there uh, We've just basically yeah, just basically given back. These are some uh, trees that we planted that are going to take a couple years to grow um, But yeah, just gave all this back so um, And we might eventually go back in and rotate, you know work it up again uh, but put another field kind of in uh, habitat uh, Storage I guess or um, inactive status so all right up ahead that is our biggest field that we own and work um, that's primarily been the corn be corn field for uh, actually selling crop uh, and yet we have the uh, the tree wind barrier uh, along the entire entire side and also the drainage ditch um, which uh, try to um, reduce how fast water flows down there. Doesn't look like much growth in here, but ideally that would be full of growth. Slow down the water, rip rap and things, rocks and stuff slow down that water. But as you can see, yeah, it's all the field slopes this way, and it also slopes down down towards the uh, down towards the mountains there, the red barn. And so it's sloping in two directions, and we do have drainage ditches on either end to capture any runoff erosion sediment, things like that, slow it down before it uh, goes somewhere else that it shouldn't be. Uh, but yeah, this is one of the, the biggest fields to, uh, to keep track of. And up ahead on the left, is that little section that we saw earlier in the soil map. Uh, it's got a nice border of vegetation um, that we kind of let go, given back, but um, this is a small field that we use kind of for like uh, experimenting and just, you know, any excess seed that, you know, is left over in the planters or stuff, we just put it down here, um, play with different cover crop techniques and things. You can see we've got uh, alternating rows of canola and oil seed there. Um, yep, just kind of a place to try out any different ideas, planting techniques, things like that. So, um, but the rest of this large field is um, either part of the grain complex or is um, just habitat. So, try not to um, come in here too much and disturb. Uh, or whatever's lurking <laughs> in the tall, tall field.
Okay, next up, this is our grass field. Uh, as you can see, we have some equipment here. Combination of harvesting for hay. Um, so we've got a lot of hay equipment. You know, hay is a lot more work um, than just uh, using the uh, wagon uh, to just collect the wet grasses. Um, yeah, we've got, uh, got both equipment here, grass wagon, and yeah, the, the square baler. So, and we also do use a round baler as well. Um, but yeah, the hay is the most work, so we don't really do too much with that. Just any hay that we harvest, we try to sell because um, it is so much work. Try to see some kind of money out of that. So yeah, I think that's uh, that's going to conclude the the tour for this video. Probably do other sections later on. Um, don't want to make this too long, but uh, definitely appreciate you watching. And uh, if you got any comments or any ideas? Uh, let us know. And yeah, appreciate you watching and uh, just trying to get some ideas out there and visualize, you know, what what uh, type of sustainable farm, uh, you know, we'd like to have. So. Thanks for watching.